Hello, everybody. We're going to be making a slip case today. So I'm going to show you how to prep the materials for this. Um, we're going to be prepping them by hand. This is what we're going to make here. This is the slip case. Um, and that's the finished object that we're making. So it looks like this. It's covered in book cloth. So you're going to need book cloth, a piece of decorative paper to line uh, the boards once we've cut them and then your materials that you're gonna measure. This is a different set of books, uh, the pamphlets. If you don't have all of your pamphlets, you might want to just measure something else, measure a different book or something that we've made, or you might wanna have, if you have a book that you know you'd like to have a slipcase for, that is an option too. But if you have the pamphlets, that's gonna be the easiest to follow uh, with me because um, you'll have the same stuff. So this is my set of four that I made and I'm gonna make the slip case for these. So I have, you guys should have this from, people from my class should have this worksheet, have access to it. Um, it's pretty simple because really what this just illustrates is cutting the board, which is the first thing that we're gonna do. Um, and then on the other side of this is some diagrams of the finished, box uncovered so this would be just be bare board here and then board that is then glued down on the decorative paper that we would then cut out and i'm going to do all of these steps so it's not like you have to have this diagram to follow this um, but it's just kind of a nice little backup to kind of check and make sure you know you're doing all of the things but uh and the lower half of this side is you know just a little diagram of the piece of book cloth uh, that you're going to need, and then a diagram of all of the little cuts that we make um, to make these little finishing covering edges and, and different things. Um, but you're going to see it all. So it's, you know, you don't have to follow the diagram because this looks crazy. <laughs> this looks wild. Like, how am I supposed to do this? But um, you don't have to do that. You're going to watch the tutorial. So but the first thing you're going to need is board. So cutting these pieces of board and we're doing this by hand. And this is good to know how to do just in case you don't have a cutter, which most people don't. Um, so it's good to know how to do this. Let me just make sure that my sound is in the right spot. Yep. Okay. Just don't double check that it's through my headphones. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is measure the book. So I've got this ruler that has centimeters on it. Um, you can see them. I'm going to, that's why I have this piece of paper as well, so you can see the centimeter measurements, because we're going to measure everything in centimeters this time instead of inches. It's just a little bit easier to add uh, another millimeter to things and, th and stuff like that. So that's why we're going to do it this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is right here in the upper right corner, it says measure the books in centimeters. So we're going to measure the height, the width, and the thickness of the stack of books. So you know, typically what I'll do is I'll kind of just take a measurement for each book, because especially when there's a set like this, they can all be slightly different. And so as I do this, I'm looking and this is like right at 11. So if I have four books, I might even just kind of, this is the width. Okay, so I'm going to do 11. I'm just going to jot this down. And then let me measure the next one. And this is a nice measuring device because it uh i can kind of click it on i can kind of lock it in place this is right under 11 but if one is 11 so i'm going to go ahead and put 11 for that next one that you're going to make it to the widest piece so now this one is more like 11.1 .1, so i'm thinking that's probably what we're going to do because if there's one that's that wide we have to go with that and then the last one is, uh, it's slightly under 11. So, but we're going to go with the largest measurement here. So I'm going to put that in, just fill in the blank with 11.1 .1 centimeters. Um, so I'm just assuming you guys know how to read a, a ruler in centimeters, but just in case you don't, one of these little lines here, that is a millimeter. And then this full measurement here where it has the one, that's a centimeter. So that's how much a centimeter is. And instead of having 12 marks, uh, it, there's 10. So this would be 1.5 centimeters, or this would be 0.5 centimeters or five millimeters. 
So when we, we're getting to that next part where we're adding on an extra millimeter, I'll show you what that means. But I'll just have that. And so most rulers, most of your metal rulers, I'll just show you this, even though I'm not using this. Most of your uh, metal rulers, oh yeah, has inches on one side and then this, the centimeters are on the other side. So that says millimeters, but it's exactly what I just showed you, which is this, this is a centimeter. This measurement from the edge of the ruler to here is a centimeter. And then each one of these tick marks is a millimeter. Okay. All right, so I measured the width. Now I'm gonna do the height. And you can also just kind of jog them all up and do it, but I just find that they're slippery and they just, so it's easier for me to just kind of jot this down and, and measure it. So I'm kind of sliding it up and down because I want to measure at the highest point and it's like 14.1 for the height. So I'm going to just kind of jot that down on the outside here, 14.1, go to the next one. That's also, it's slightly under 14.1. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and go 14.1 on the second one. And then 14.1 slightly under. They should be about the same because they were all cut at the same time. They should be the same, but just to, you know, double check. This one is right at 14.1. So 14.1 is what I'm gonna go with for the full height. So I'm filling that out here. So what's on the outside here is just the jotted, you know, kind of trying to find a um, average height there. Okay, so then the thickness, now this can be a kind of variable thing. So I'm getting a little bit of the glare from the ring light, but you know, you don't wanna squish them together to measure the thickness and you don't wanna completely have them relax like that either. And so just kind of a happy medium here. I'm pushing against the edge of the ruler and I'm measuring, let me lift it up so you guys can see what I'm doing. This is not the best, but I'm gonna, just so you can get a sense. What I wanna do for this is I wanna do about two centimeters. So I could do a slightly under that, but I think I'm, I'm gonna go with two. Cause when I look at that, I mean, that's gonna be, I'm afraid, I don't wanna have to squeeze, you know, like force them in, but slightly under would be okay. So I could do like 1.8 centimeters, but I think I'm just going to go with two because um, I feel like that'd be a little more comfortable and the thicker one, I won't have to like squeeze it in there. So I'm going to go with two on the thickness. And so if you made yours and they look very similar to mine, you might be able to go with those measurements, but I wouldn't, I'm not suggesting that you do that. At least give them a quick measure. And if they're within reason, you can just go along with my numbers, but if it's different, make it for your books. Don't try to match what I'm doing just because you know, it might be conceptually easier. That's not the point of this. The point is that you're gonna measure the height, width and thickness of something rectangular, probably a book, and then you can make some, a, an enclosure for it. So that's the goal of this. It's not just, you know, following along, you know, just to blindly do it. Okay, so then we come down to the next part because we actually have to add a little bit of width and we have to talk about the board and things like that. Um, so for the, let's just go down the list here one by one. And so it's going to be the height board, a board B, which is the spine. So these are the sides board. A are the sides. B is the spine and C is the head and tail. So the pieces that go on the top and the bottom. Okay. So that's how this is marked out. That's how we're going to talk about it right now. So the height of the books is, or, or the boards that we're gonna cut are gonna be the height of the book, so that's 14.1 plus another millimeter. So we're really allowing for that lining and uh, the, the paper that's gonna be on, lined on the inside and also the book cloth that wraps in. So we're kind of adding a little bit of, of height to it. So just, um, just to allow a little room. So the height of the board is gonna be the height of the books plus a millimeter. So it's 14.1 plus one millimeter. So that's going to be 14.2. So I'm just going to write that 14.2. And the width of board A is going to be the width of the books plus one BT, it says one BT, which is BT stands for board thickness. So the thing about this is because we're doing it by hand. So here's my board. This is way 
bigger than you probably are going to have. But the thickness of the board, let's see if we can get, get into it here a little bit. Okay. So the thickness of the board is going to be this, that measurement right there. So let's see what happens if we just measure that here. If we can get it on camera. So to me, that looks like it's a little less than two millimeters, but you know, I really think I could just go with two. So I'm gonna do that. That's what I'm gonna do is two millimeters for my board. Yours may not be that. So you just need to, and, and I would, if you're going to round it in one direction, round it up. So if it's really close to two or it's really close to one, it shouldn't be that thin, but let's say, or even if it's really close to three, round up to the next number, okay? Because you don't want it to be too tight. So we're gonna allow, we want some wiggle room here. You don't wanna be shoving, the books won't fit and that'll make you sad if you spend all this time trying to make it and then it doesn't fit. Okay, so we're gonna go with two millimeters as the board thickness. So then the width of board A is gonna be the width of the books and that is 11.1 .1 plus two millimeters. So that's our board thickness. I'm just gonna write two millimeters on mine just so I know. So it's 11.1 uh, .1 plus two, so that's 11.3. So my boards are gonna be, and I can just write this on here and you can do this as well if you want to. So the height is gonna be 14.2 and the width is going to be 11.3. So 11.3 here. Okay, so the 14.2, and that's gonna be the height for boards A and B. So there's two, you gotta cut two of board A and one of board B, and that is the same height because that's the, the spine, sorry, same as board A. So then, okay, so we did board A, we've got that one done. Board B, the height is same as board A, so that I'll go ahead and write it here, 14.2, and the thickness or the width of the book or the board is the thickness of the books plus a millimeter. So what did we say the thickness of the books was two centimeters plus a millimeter. So that'll be 2.1. So then here, you know, I could write that 14.2 again. And then here it's gonna be 2.1 centimeters as my width of that board. I don't know if you can see that on there, what I'm doing, okay? All right. And then we don't, the only one that's left is D, um, board C, which is the caps, the end, head and tail of the of the slipcase. So the board C, the height, which is this right here, is the same as the width of board A. So I could come up here. The width of board A is right here, 11.3. So I know now that that height is the same. So I'll just do that, 11.3. And then the width of this one, which is this width right here, is gonna be the same as board B, so the spine, plus two board thicknesses. And you can kind of see that if you look at the structure. So this is the spine. And then when you look at that board, you can tell that it's like a board thickness and a board thickness wider than the spine, which is because it's gonna sit on top. Once you make this one time, I think that'll make uh, sense to you. So 11.3 is the is the height of board C, and then the width is the same as board B. So that's 2.1 plus two board thicknesses, which is two millimeters a piece. That was our board thickness, so four millimeters. So 2.1 plus four is 2.5. This is really straight addition. It's really not that hard. So we're going to need, we need two of these, board C, and we need two of board A. So that's what we've got to do now is cut these pieces. So now I can just set that to the side and get my board out. And I have this huge piece of board. This is really kind of too big. But I'm going to just go, try to get it on here and do this. Because I'm really, right now, I'm just going to make tick marks. Okay, so this is my board and uh, I've squared off an edge 
so that I have a 90 degree. And if you bought that board that I recommended that comes in those packs, it should be square. So you shouldn't have to do that. You do wanna know what the grain direction is for it though. As we talked about with other things earlier in the semester, this piece I know is grain long. Like if I, it's hard to show this, but it's flexible this way. You can kind of see it if you look at the smaller uh, image here, switch camera. And then it's not as flexible this way. Oh wait, maybe it is. No, it's the grain is running this way. So I actually sometimes will take my pencil and draw on there because this board is always going to be inside what I'm making. It's not going to be exposed. So I'll make a pencil mark on here just to show me where the grain is because we want our grain to run with the height of the slip case. So we want the grain running like this so that if it does bend, it's going to bend like you can't, I can't even really demonstrate it because you can't, it's not, it's really flat. Um, but that's how we want our grain running. So that's how we're going to cut our pieces like this. So this, this little note here uh, in the white says grain direction of all, and it, it's all going vertically like that. Okay. So height and width. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my height on here because that's going to be the height of board A and B. So that is 14.2. So I'll take my ruler and this is my height. So I'm just gonna kind of jog it up 14.2. And I'm making that pencil mark pretty wide and then I'm probably gonna cut outside of it and you'll see, can you guys see without 14.2? That looks so small, but it's, this is it, 14.2, 14.2, okay? And then my width is 11.3 for one board. So 11.3, and in this case, I could actually turn it over, but I'm looking at the numbers backwards, but it's okay. There's 11, one, two, three, and again, pencil mark there. And now I'm gonna measure from that pencil mark over 11.3. So I'm just putting my, I'm actually gonna come right to the edge of the pencil mark and then do 11, one, two, three, pencil mark here. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure, again, my height a little bit over so I can make another line and it's 14.2. So here's 12, 13, 14.2, one, two, pencil mark here, 13, 14 one, two, pencil mark here. And that's just gonna make it so that I can use a ruler in a few minutes to cut across. So here's my 11.3, 11.3. Now I've got to do the 2.1. So I've, I've drawn out the tick marks for these two and for the, these two. And now I've got to do it for the 2.1. So again, I'll just slide it over and there's my 2.1. And again, I'm just coming back and making those pencil marks darker so I can see. And I will, I'm also going to transfer it again up another so I can connect it. And now I've got to make these two. So this is A, A, here's B, and now C. Okay, so they're going to be, uh, the width of them is 2.5. So come to the edge here. 2.5, dark pencil mark. And then I know that it's five because two and a half is half of five. So I could just do five here like that. So there's the width of my board C. So this, I'm gonna write B down here again, just because so, they're, they're close in size, just so I can see. Just making notes for myself because all this is gonna get covered up. And then the height of that is 11.3. So then I can just, that height and it's I only need it right here so I'm kind of going in the center of this one to make my tick mark 11.323 this is reflective it's kind of a pain sometimes with that because it's hard to see and 11 one two three point three okay I'm gonna go ahead and make up a, a line with that. Hopefully my head's not in the way. Good, it's fine. 
and I'm just gonna draw that so I can see it because I'm losing my track a little bit. So here, there's my other line. So I'm gonna put my pencil mark there and then just kind of connect them. And actually I wanna make sure I'm on the outside of that line a little bit. Kind of curved down, but that's okay. And then here, or the A, I'm just drawing this out a little bit because I wanna be able to see what I'm doing. Because I have an L, because I have a little square, I could just draw these, but I want you guys to be able to do it. So I'm gonna do it manually. And so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna mark this width again. So it's 11.3 and I'm just gonna make a tick mark so that I can connect them. And then here, bring it up. So I'm just making two tick marks a little bit apart from each other so that I can connect. And then here is 2.1, so I'll just do that. 2.1, other tick mark. And then these two were 2.5 and then five. So 2.5 is here and five is here. And so now I can just connect everything. I think I had already done it, but that's cool. All right, I'm gonna draw them so you can see before I cut. And this should kind of help you see what I'm doing and then I'll cut them and then I'll pause before I go to the next part. which will be gluing them together. So I'm just finding my pencil marks. And on this board, it's a little tricky because there's a lot of little, like just marks on the board. So it's a little bit, you know, sometimes I'll even use a Sharpie if I can't see my marks for whatever reason, I'll use a, a marker. Yeah, so normally we could use a cutter to do this, but it's still complicated. So if this is blowing your mind, it, don't think that it would be a lot easier, uh, you know, in another time because you'd still have to uh, figure this stuff out and you still have to measure and you still have to figure out how to set up the cutter and all those things. So it doesn't really make it a whole lot easier This, I'm erasing this line just so I won't accidentally think that needs to be the height, because that's not right. Okay. All right. Okay, so B, 2A, B, and then two Cs. Okay? So it's a pretty little squat thing, but that's gonna be what we do. And now I'm gonna show you how to cut these. I'll just cut them. So for this, I am gonna use my metal ruler because I'm gonna be using a knife and I don't want to cut the plastic of that little uh, measuring device. So I'm grabbing my uh, X-Acto. And I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna cut the height of this and I'm just gonna cut where I drew that line. And I'm just gonna go ahead and really just cut all the way across and cut this board off because this big piece of board is just a little unwieldy. It's flopping all around. So make sure you have a sharp blade and go ahead and do this long cut. It's because this is the most difficult really because you just got to cut. So just hold down in place and keep cutting. It's probably like five or six cuts. I'm starting to feel the mat. I think I got it. Yeah. So over here on this side, now I can just kind of cut that off. So I'm not gonna even use the ruler because now, because the piece I'm gonna cut right here is here. And well, yeah, okay. I just, I'm gonna try to do it pretty neatly, but I'm not too worried about it. I might save this little piece though, because, well, it's a pretty small piece. I don't know, probably won't. Sometimes I get bad about saving all these little pieces and it's like, no, we don't need to do that, <laughs> but okay. All right, so that height is cut. So now I'm just gonna cut the width of, of 
the two A boards and the B board. And because I drew with the pencil line, it's really kind of nice. Now that I'm ready to cut, I don't have to really line anything up anymore. I can just follow the lines. So let's go ahead and do it again. And I would not worry about how many times you're going through. Just make sure you're going through straight and that you're holding that ruler in place. This is when a cork back ruler is real helpful because it does help you hold it steady. So there's the first board A. And then board B. Well, no, this is the second board A, and then B will be next. Okay. Kind of over undercut that a little bit, but. So now I'm actually rotating this because I can't, it's so skinny that I don't want to have to lay my ruler on nothing on this side. It would just flop off. So I'm going to rotate the board so that I have excess material to put my ruler on. And I kind of made a little mistake here, but it will be okay when we put it together. This is the interior and it's gonna get covered up and we're gonna be putting glue on it. So I can kind of fill in the little gap that that makes where I kind of curved. That's just, you know, trying to hurry. And I don't know why I'm doing that. I can take my time, but you know, sometimes I kind of feel pressure making a video for other people. So, okay, so there's B and now I'm gonna cut C. So I'm just gonna go ahead, because I drew it with a pencil, I can just go ahead and cut that full piece. So I'm just gonna line it up. And then cut the other width of C, the second C board. Okay. So here's my little scrap piece that I'm just gonna set to the side. And then I've got to cut off that little bit right here at the top of C. So I'll we'll just do that. And then we'll have our pieces. Cool. Careful, don't get too wild because you saw that. Luckily I stopped myself. That This is hard to hold, so. Make sure you're pushing straight down because, yeah, this is difficult. Honestly, since I've kind of cut through, I'm going to take the ruler off and just pull straight as I can. I mean, I have a new blade, but it is taking a few cuts more than I thought that it takes with this board. I don't know, pretty thick. Okay, and then this, at least the first few cuts, I am gonna use the ruler, because if I don't, I'm afraid I'm gonna get, it will be crooked, so. Okay, all right, so these are my pieces, A, B, and C. So I have two C, two A, and one B. Okay, so now we're gonna put these on a decorative paper. So I'll just show you that real quick. 
So this is just a paste paper that I had made a long time ago and I just found it to be used. Uh, and you just wanna make sure you know the grain direction. So the grain direction on this one is long and I had marked it. Um, so I just, I'm gonna glue my pieces, glue them down and glue them on the piece. So I just need to know, and I'm putting them down so that the, the board is getting glued to the blank side, the non-decorative side, because this is what I want on the inside of my box. Okay, so you'll, you need a piece of paper or a decorative piece, or you can use just a plain, like Canson or whatever is fine too. This is a pretty thin piece, but that Canson paper, that color paper that we've been using is perfectly fine. And then you're gonna need a piece of book cloth. And like I say in here, uh, book cloth needs to be the box height times plus two times the thickness plus two inches. And the, uh, that's the box height. And then that's the width, I guess that's the width of the cloth, cloth box height by two box widths plus the thickness plus two inches. And the thing is you don't really need to work this out for yourself because I went ahead and gave you about nine inches high by 13 inches wide. So this is plenty big. And you don't have to be exact about that. It just need what you need to know is, you know, it needs to fit your finished box. You have to have a piece of book cloth big enough to basically be able to do that. So you could even like hold your books up and kind of go, oh, okay, it's going to need to be slightly bigger. You know what I mean? Your box will add a little bit of width to that, but you could kind of determine what you need from what you're going to cover. So, or what you're going to make the enclosure for. You know, you can kind of use that as your as your measurement. So like what I'm saying is you could use these and as long as you're like, oh, that's big enough. You see what I'm saying? Like it's tall enough for each end and for the thickness here. And then it's wide enough for this like that. So you can kind of judge how much cloth you need from the thing that you're covering or you're making the enclosure for. And then you need the piece of paper you just need enough to fit these pieces. And you do wanna to try to get them on there following the grain. For these pieces, for sure, for the spine and for these, for this, it doesn't matter as much which way they're on. Sorry, that's not in frame. But yeah, you just need a piece of paper that's big enough. That's why I kind of look at that like, well, okay. Um, if these aren't the right direction, they sit on top and bottom, it's not as, as big an issue, but if you have enough, you might as well follow the grain. But anyway, that's what that's what you need for the next step. So I'm gonna stop this recording. This is was the materials prep, and I just wanted to talk about the other materials that you're gonna need, which is the lining and the book cloth. Um, and then we're gonna do that in the next step. We're gonna line it and then put it together, and then we'll do the covering. Okay, so I'm going to stop this one and start a new one. Okay. All right. Thanks. See you soon.